Hi. Uh, in this video, we're going to start the new topic, and this topic is associated with functions. So, maybe a quick reminder what is a function? Function is a rule of correspondence between two sets, such that there is exactly one element in the second set, this set we will call y, assigned to each element from the first set, which we will call x. Now, how now, uh, now how do we understand it? Look, you probably had this in high school and did it, uh, did a lot with it, but we have by y we will denote values. And then we will have usually some formula that will transform any value of x into one, one unique value of y. Okay, x is going to be called an argument. And this expression, of course, we read y equals f of x. Okay, and we will go through uh, many conventional functions, and we're going to start with the simplest one, which is, of course, linear function. Now, linear function is given by the following formula. y equals a times x plus b. In this setting, the a that stands and multiplies uh, the argument, we call coefficient, while b, we call it positive. Bigger. 
If B is getting bigger, we will be moving that function higher. On the other hand, if B is getting smaller, we will be moving this function lower. Okay, and this is it. This is basically everything we can say about this, to just say, trivial example. Now let's see what happens if A uh, is no longer equal to zero. And again, maybe let's start with some very simple example. And just say that y equals 2x plus 1. Now, as the name suggests, the linear function will always give us a straight line. So, in order to draw it, we basically need to know two points. The points that are most interesting to us are the point where this function is carried through either horizontal or vertical axis. We can find them by the means of the tables of something you uh, probably done in high school. So, let's try. We are looking for those two intercepts. First, if x is 0, we see that y is equal to 1. Now, when y is 0, x is negative 1 over 2. How did I got this? How did I get this result? Well, this is easy. I substituted 0 for y and I solved this equation. Because that means we get 2x equals to 1 and x equals negative 1 over 2. And look, this is actually enough for us to be able to draw this function. So let's, let's just do it. And look, now we see 
the values of the function are always changing by one. So now if x is one, y is two, and this two is over here, and three. So if I'm gonna draw this function. It's going to look like this. Now, why is this function looking different? What is the key feature? We see the B, so the constant is the same in both cases, right? But here, the coefficient is 1. So we see that now that this function is also rising. Look, as x is getting bigger and bigger, y is also getting bigger and bigger. But this function grows slowly. And from this, we can get our first uh, conclusion, which is every time when coefficient a goes down, the function is pivoting clockwise around the intercept. So it's so the function, this function is clearly steeper. It rises more sharply, this one is flatter. And we simply see that see, uh, see the, the, as A is going down, the coefficient is going down, we see that the function will get flatter and flatter and flatter. And look, it works also in the opposite direction. If A is going to get bigger, we will see the function is actually getting steeper and this time it rotates around the intercept counterclockwise okay so now let's consider a little different example oh maybe one more thing look what if we had this function just as at the beginning, but now instead of 2, 1, we would have negative 1 over here. So let's, let's see this with a table. If x is 0, y is negative 1. Then if x is 1, uh, if x is 1, it's 1. Then we would have 3. Then we would have uh, 5 and 7. Look, each of these values of the function for given x is 2 units lower. So what does it mean? Basically, if we want to have, if, if, we, if our b, our constant is getting lower, it, what happens is exactly the same as with the uh, constant function. Look, we, all we have to do is to take this function and move it two units down. And of course we are assuming that those two are perfectly, well, they are just parallel. They are parallel, which means that all these distances are the same. And we see again that now if A is, if B is getting smaller, the function goes down. If b would be getting higher, the function would be moving up. Okay, so maybe one last example. What if we would have negative coefficients? So if we have negative equals negative x plus 1. Okay, again we can start with the table. So x, y, We've got 0, 1, 2, 3. Oh, no, but let's start like this. Okay, so now if x is 0, y is 1. If y is 0, x is 1 as well. Okay, so if I'm going to draw this function, Okay, now 
the, the main difference between the two, the one that we had before and the one we have now, is that this one is downward sloping. So, which means that as x is getting better, y is getting lower. And look, it makes perfect sense because we have minus in front of x. Now look, if x would be 2, we have a negative 1. Then 3, negative 2. 4, negative 3. So in this case, the lower, the bigger is the value of x, the lower is the value of, uh, of y. And you see, we are always, the value of x is always going down by one unit. So in each case, we are going down by negative y. Okay, but look, everything else that we said still is true. If, for example, here instead of 1, we would have plus 3, then we would just draw 1, 2, 3, exactly the same uh, uh, we would draw a parallel function to this one, but this one would be going through 0.3. So, again, this one would be 2 units higher. Now, if A is going down, and remember, if A is going down, in this case, it means that it gets more negative. For example, we would have negative 2x. Then the function would change the slope. And remember, every time when A is going down, in this case, remember, it becomes more negative, we are rotating, we are pivoting around this point clockwise. And of course, if if A this time would be getting bigger, which means closer and closer to zero, the function would be pivoting counterclockwise. Okay, and I think this summarizes all the basic information about linear function. Uh, so thank you for your attention, and in the next video we will move to quadratic function.